research and discovery. Futurists. It's a September morning off the coast of northern Sicily in Italy. A boat owned by environmentalists is carrying Laura Abriano and her associates along the chain of offshore islands. The warm waters here are beloved by dolphins and whales, but growing tourism and industrial developments can cause the creatures harm. Laura's worried about this because she sees the harm to mammals as a symptom of a bigger threat. We study whales and dolphins mainly because these animals are on the top of the food chain and their behaviour allows us to determine the overall condition of our marine surroundings. It's all about balance. Like every natural environment, the underwater ecosystem is managed by the equilibrium between the various organisms that live in it. Any break in the food chain could have serious consequences for many species. The threats are plenty, particularly one human-caused pollution which is dangerous and poorly understood, the contamination of the seas with artificial noise. Here at the Barcelona Aquarium in Spain, marine life is well protected behind the thick glass of their tank. In the open seas, animals can't escape from ever-mounting human intervention into their lives. What has to be understood is that some of the marine organisms who've been living in this environment for millions of years have adapted to it. In particular, sea mammals like whales and dolphins, who use sound for all their activities. If man's sources of noise contaminate the area the mammals live in, preventing them from correctly receiving the information, it'll put all their lives in danger. For whales and dolphins, sound is the primary means of learning about their immediate environment. They can't rely on their other senses, as the other senses' effectiveness, like sight, is limited in water. Loud man-made noises, such as industrial and military sonars, and maritime transport, like propeller noise, can traumatise and incapacitate whales and dolphins. I think we can compare the process to human vision. If our vision is limited, we're incapable of living without assistance. For those animals, daily activities become difficult with reduced capacity to capture prey and orientate themselves through sound. Some of the sounds made by sea mammals can be heard underwater from a distance of many kilometers. Back off Sicily, the ecologists are looking for local whales and dolphins using an electronic listening device. This is a hydrophone, a special microphone which allows us to capture sound underwater, particularly all the sounds made by whales and dolphins. But no luck, this passing motorboat makes a deafening noise underwater. Whales and dolphins, with their delicate hearing, try to avoid it by swimming away or diving to dangerous depths. The negative effect of noise pollution is becoming clear, though scientific data is still very scarce. To assist with more research, scientists use hydrophones submerged in deep waters thousands of meters below the surface. Banks of such devices can collect enough data to accurately locate any sound source nearby. Deployed on the seabed, an acoustic observatory doesn't disturb the underwater life. This method is more environmentally friendly than using ordinary listening devices. Such observatories can send the sound data to shore instantly. One such is at the Sicilian port of Catania, at the laboratory taking part in a European demonstration mission called LIDO, or LIDO. A hydrophone can either be lowered into the sea from a ship for a local recording, or, like in the case of Lido, installed underwater and connected by optical fibre to computers at a land station. 
eh, sulla terraferma. Che that allows us to listen in real time to the sounds made by whales and dolphins from a distance of many kilometers away from the sea. Chilometri e chilometri di distanza in fondo al mare. First of all. Okay, just. The... It's, it's too confused now. LIDO, which stands for Listening to the Deep Ocean Environment, is being coordinated at the Laboratory of Applied Bioacoustics near Villanova Ila Giltru, near Barcelona. It's the centre where all sound data is processed from the European Seafloor Observatories Network, or ESONET, which links 11 observatories all over Europe. We first filter the data to see if there are interesting acoustic events. So this can be whistles or this can be sonar signals from cetaceans. Uh, after the detection stage we try to classify it. And after that we uh, transmit the data to the general pub public. Everyone can download the analysis results and we show it in a client. This scientific base should enable computers to automatically identify and classify different sounds, whether animal or artificial. The vertical bars we see here are the clicks of a sperm whale. The clicks it uses, for instance, to find squid, one of its prey. This is one example of sound that can be recorded under the sea. And here is the noise produced by a ship. Distinguishing the sound of sperm whales from the sound of a ship is an easy task for a human being, but quite difficult for a machine. So the challenge is to develop an automatic method to make such identification. The system is being designed to constantly monitor European populations of marine animals, providing knowledge of their migration patterns and reaction to man-made noise. All this information will be publicly available on the Internet soon. We've developed a website which will allow users to connect and listen in real time to the sound sources coming from all the observatories and to visualize it as a sonogram. A sonogram is a real-time image of the sound that indicates the presence of a sperm whale or a dolphin or a boat. It also shows how they interact. There's so much we don't know about how sound plays into the lives of whales and dolphins. Man is making a lot of noise these days. The only way to know more is listening to the deep. <laughs>